<clears throat> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today we have one of the most beautiful Gospels, maybe because we read it so much in the church, it became a common Gospel. But when every apostle, every Gospel writer writes about it, it had great impact on the world, had great impact on the believers at the time to see this story in which Christ fed, in which Christ fed the 5,000. And when you look at the story at face value, you have to kind of dig a little bit to see what is on the heart of Christ as he is going through this, this story. We know that the apostles just came back from going out and preaching, casting out demons, healing the sick and doing miracles, and they're very excited. And then they go to a deserted place, a very calm place to kind of rest and to be alone with the Lord. And then it says, the Lord began to speak to the people about the kingdom of God and healed those who had need of healing. And the people came to him. They followed him. They received him. He gave everyone who needed healing, healing. And it says, When the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He didn't have to do the miracle. It was very easy to just send them to the next village. They're used to walking. Let them walk a few miles. They'll go. They'll get something to eat. Everybody will be fine. What does Jesus tell them? You give them something to eat. You see, Jesus knows that there is a deep hunger within each and every one of us. He's saying, I don't want them to go to the world to get fed. I don't want them to find their provisions from the world. You give them something to eat. How much Christ sees the hunger and the thirst in every soul standing him before standing before him right now in this church. He looks and he's saying, I want to give you something to eat. I want to satisfy, satisfy the depths of your soul. Easy to say, go just get a higher paying job, go get a prettier wife, go live in a in a in a nice city, go go all these things. Easy to go make yourself happy. This is never. You give them something to eat. You see, Christ has a deep longing to satisfy the hunger within your soul. What is the hunger that most of us are looking for? Many are starving for love. Many are starving for love. And we're telling people to go to the world to find love. We're telling people to go and find it in a relationship. Go find it in, in friendships and go... But Christ is saying, I want to give them something to eat. How much is Christ looking to you and he's seeing that you are trying to satisfy the deep hunger within yourself from something other than him? In the story of the Samaritan woman, when Jesus asked the Samaritan woman, give me something to drink. And she says, how are you a Jew asking me a Samaritan to give you something to drink? And he says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who asks you, you would ask him and he would give you living water. What do you mean? What are you saying? He's saying, if you knew the thirst, if you knew the gift of God and what it is that I'm thirsty for, I'm thirsty to give you. My thirst is to give you that living water. Say no. Let me just find it from a higher paying job. Let me just find it from more friends. Let me find it from something else of the world. And he says, you will always remain unsatisfied. Proverbs 27 says this. It says, a satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb. A soul that is satisfied hates, hates even the taste of the honey. Say, who would hate something that is so sweet? It says somebody that is satisfied. Whenever we read the stories of the saints and we read the stories of the monks who are living in the desert for God knows how many years, 60 years, Ambakaras, his story last, last week was his feast, 60 years living by himself. 60 years. What are you doing by yourself? What are you eating? Who's keeping you company? Actually, in his story, you want to know who's keeping St. Karas company? The Lord himself visited St. Karas every day. 
Not because Jesus felt bad for him, he's lonely and he can't find anyone else. He said no. Because he found that his satisfaction is only in me. I'm telling you, many of us still don't know this secret. See, of course, like that's why we're here at church. No. I'll come to church, but I better not lose my job. People tell me this. I love the Lord and I've been praying for this, but as soon as he didn't give me that, I don't want to have anything to do with God. Then, then God's not your God. It's what you were praying for. That's your God. That's your God. It has nothing to do with the Lord himself. A satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb. But to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. What we don't realize is that every foolish thing that we run after and every sinful thing that we run after and we begin to love is because we're starving. If you hadn't eaten for a couple of weeks, you're starving. There's no food anywhere and we're in a famine. And there's a piece of spoiled, rotten bread here and I left the room. Everyone in here would fight for that spoiled, rotten bread. You say, that's so gross. You say, because you're starving. Because you're starving, you'll even eat something spoiled and rotten. Each person take a second and review in your mind and say, is there things that I'm eating of the world that are rotten and spoiled to satisfy a hunger that I think is going to be satisfied by something in the world? I think it'll be satisfied by what laziness, by friendships, by love, by wealth, by riches. Today, let's listen to the Pauline epistle. Very, very beautiful because it's the epistle of contentment. That Christ wants to satisfy us and make us content. He says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these we shall be content. Abuna. You're not in, in some African village giving me these words. We're here in America and we all have, you know, thank God everyone's doing well and everyone is happy. You're tell me about food and clothing. What world are you living in? But St. Paul is, is trying to drive home a spiritual point. Let's listen. Food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich, basically loving things of the world, fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Maybe we've all been there at some point. Maybe we've been, we've, we've drowned before. Maybe we've drowned before from the world. What do we keep on doing? Let me go back to the world. I found a different secret. How many times do we find somebody satisfied with the presence of Jesus? Not we, we pray because we're supposed to pray. And we pray, we say a good prayer, God bless, God do, God thank you, thank you, thank you. We say a bunch of things and we're out. But there are some souls, they're satisfied with the presence of Christ. They're drinking from the presence of Christ. They come out and they say, I don't need anything. I don't need anything but Him. It's amazing that St. Paul says in Philippians 3. Imagine St. Paul had accomplished so much and had been so... Like famous and well-known. He was a great Pharisee, a great Hebrew, an expert in the law. He was living in, in a place where it was a great business going. And he was a, a, a Roman citizen and a Jew. He had everything. He says this. What things were gained to me, like the things that I can consider as like part of my possessions or part of my, my, my image. But these things which were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Okay, but you're at loss. Now you don't have the things that you used to have. Listen to what he says. Yet indeed, I also counted all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. Imagine St. Paul's not saying, I lost everything when I followed Jesus. He says, no. I lost everything and I consider it rubbish. 
It's the most foolishness in the world. You say, no, 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 let me tell you. Let me, let me, just let me give you one day on the town. I'll tell you. It's not rubbish. It's great. It's the most foolish thing for us to go after these things. The Lord is thirsty. Today, he's telling, he's telling the church, he's telling the church, you give them something to eat from the altar. You give them something to eat that's only going to satisfy them. And what did they do? They were eight and they were filled. And then 12 leftover baskets were taken up by them. What does that mean? They left with abundance. They can't wait to meet the children of God that are in abundance, overflowing with love. I remember when we, I like to go and do service trips to, to the poorest villages in Egypt. I went to a lady, very poor lady. She has no roof. The house is falling apart. She has two paraplegic daughters. They can barely walk. The, the walls are brick and stone. So as, she's, as, as the kids are moving around, they're like hitting the walls and it's rough and scratching them. And I came with an organization. They said, your mama, tell us what, anything you need. Okay, can we get you a roof? She says, no, I'm fine. Which we thought is the typical spiritual thing that somebody's offering you money. You say, no, I'm okay. She says, no, but my neighbor needs. Please go to her. You're like, you have two, she, she's a widow. And she has two paraplegic children. And she has no roof in her house. And the, and the floor is mud. And she says, go to the neighbor next door. We're saying, please, you need a new roof. Let us, let us build you a new roof. Your floor is, 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 is mud. Let it, she's like, I promise you I'm fine. What? These people are trying to shove money down her throat. And they're saying, we just want to do anything for you, lady. Just take what we have to give. She kept on saying, thank Jesus. Thank Jesus. Go to the woman next. Why? I lived all these years without a roof. Rubbish. It's rubbish. We're talking about a roof here. I'm not talking about luxury. Rubbish. I found Jesus. A satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb. Are you hungry for Christ? Be careful if you're snacking from the world. You know, like my kids, they're always you know, ravaging the, the, the pantry and eating cookies all day. And when it comes to dinner, they don't want to eat dinner. They're snacking all day that when the real meal comes, it's a steak dinner, kids. Like, let's eat it. Like, no, no, we ate Oreo cookies. Nam. We ate Oreo cookies. You, ate Oreo, you, you finished the whole box of Oreo cookies? And they're going to be hungry very short time. Are you snacking on something? Only you can answer that question. Are you snacking on the world? And you think that you're full, you think that you're satisfied, I promise you, your soul is starving. Spend time in the presence of Jesus. The presence of Jesus is so sweet. How do we pray? Be careful when we pray and we say, Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and I thank you for mom and I thank you for dad and I thank you for my job and be with this person, be with that person. What is that? We, we, like we, we do it and like God's like, hello, like I'm over here. Hello. Like, enough with the speech. Like let's, let's spend time together. Open your heart to me. Let me open my heart to you because I long to give you everything. The brother of the, of the prodigal son is living in the house and he says, you never throw me a party. You never give me anything. And the father says, all that I have are yours. In reading the Pauline epistle. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through many sorrows. He's talking about all the destruction that comes from just satisfying from the world. Listen to this beautiful best verse in the whole Bible. But you, O man of God. It's you. But you, O man of God. You're not like them. You, O daughter of God, you're not like them. The destruction and the perdition and the greediness and the sorrows. But you, O man of God, what does he say? Flee these things. The word flee means run as fast as you can away from these things. Flee, flee these things and pursue or chase righteousness, godliness, faith, love. Patience, gentleness. See, these are preaching words. Okay, finish your sermon. 
Do you have godliness? Do you have love? Do you have pa- parents out there? Do you have patience? Do you have patience? No, I don't have patience. Do you have gentleness? I lost my gentleness. You, O oh man of God, you, O oh woman of God, flee the world. Flee the things that are satisfying you because you're empty and because you can't feel the presence or the joy that comes from Christ. You'll never have gentleness and patience and wisdom and godliness and love. You can't because these are only coming from Christ. Drink from his presence. He longs to give you. He longs to satisfy. They say, just send them just anywhere. Go to the world. He says, you give them something to eat. They need to eat from us. They need to eat from the altar. They need to eat from the word of God. They need to eat from the presence of Christ. If you send them to the next city, they're going to remain poor. But if you bring them here, they'll never forget that they ate from the hands of God. Today, there's a challenge before you. To starve yourself from the world and to feast on Christ. But if you're snacking on the world, you'll be unaware of the deep hunger within your soul. If you're empty, if you're down, if you can't find joy anymore, you can't find peace in things, you're looking for the next best thing in every situation, find it in Christ. And I've over here, no. One foot in, one foot out. One bite from the world, one bite from Jesus. One bite from the world, one bite from Jesus. Never going to be full until it says, and they ate and they were filled. So they all ate and were filled. You know, when you think of like, like, and filled is like, okay, they just, they, they're not hungry. They're, they're filled, they're full, they're overflowing. And 12 baskets of leftover fragments were taken up by them. Overflow of God's blessings in your life. Just, Remember this, but you, O man of God or a woman of God, flee these things and pursue or chase righteousness. Righteousness. People chasing righteousness. Be honest with me today. It's one thing to do something righteous and it's another thing to chase righteousness. Are we chasing righteousness? Okay, if it comes, I'll try. If it comes my way, I'll try. Laugh. Chase righteousness. Chase godliness. Chase faith. Run after love. Cling on to patience and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. Today the Lord comes to give us satisfaction in our souls. As we pray the liturgy and we're praying, don't get distracted by kids or noise. Don't get distracted. Say, Lord, I'm coming and I'm starving. My soul within me is desperate. I'm in sin. But I want to get to the point where it says, a a satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, hates honey. It's satisfied in Christ. I don't want to chase after things in the world, but I want to be satisfied by you. Be filled once again. To be filled and overflowing to the lives that are around me. Glory be to God forever. Amen.